Hi everybody, Dan Oldman, Mike Buer, race number eight at Belmont Park on Saturday is the $100,000 English Channel Stakes for three-year-olds on the turf. Hopefully, we're expecting a lot of wet weather in the New York area on Saturday. Rain or shine, play the Belmont card with a DRF Bets account. Sign up, receive a 300% deposit match at bets.drf.com. Here's the field for the English Channel. We're going to handicap it as if it's on the turf. We're hoping that the wet weather stays away. The number six, Thera for Christophe Clement, going to be vying for favoritism in here. And it seems when you hike him up into the graded stakes ranks, it doesn't work out. But in non-graded stakes races, he's one, two, three, four, six for six. Yeah, it's certainly the right race for him. You can't argue with that. He's a horse who really likes the mile, really likes Belmont Park turf. Um, and I think you're right that he's probably going to vie for favoritism. I think he should be the favorite, though, um, if we're on the turf in this race. His form is just good. He did not run well in the Saranac last time. He was wide throughout that race. He just never fired in there. It was not his best performance. But I think it's pretty clear when you go back through his PP. When they when Clements properly spotted him, he's tough as nails. He comes with a good finish when he's right. The main concern's the ground. I'm sure yeah. Christophe's not looking for soft ground for therapist. I know he won on good turf two starts back, but they could have, you know, put him into the gate backwards that day in that yeah. three horse field and he was going to win right. even if he had to swim home. I'm not sure he loves soft ground. It'll be interesting to see what he gets. If the ground is good to firm, he might very well be the horse to beat with the class relief. The Seven Roses vision is coming off of a restricted stakes win at Saratoga on August the 27th. He beat a very nice horse that came back to win the Hill Prince, a graded stakes race with an 89 yeah. buyer. I like this horse's tactical speed. I do wonder if we've seen his peak. Uh, and yeah. his peak might be sort of a mid 80s, which means to me he's going to have to run well and he's going to have to have some things work from tripwise. Yeah, I think all those things are true, Dan. I mean, I'll take nothing away from from for winning last time, um, but I think it's just worth pointing out in the better talk now. Um, have at it who he beat and who did come back to win the Hill Prince. He was best in that race. He had a really tough trip. This horse got a perfect trip, sitting right in behind. The rail opened up for him in the stretch, and he got through. And have at it in the meantime was just stuck on the outside trying to chase this horse. Um, I'll take nothing away from him for winning that race, but he got a little bit lucky to win it. And other than that, his races, they give him a chance in here to be sure. But... I'm not so sure that they make him one of the main contenders. I think he's going to have to run better to beat this field. Got to think a lot of the money is going to go to the five Hazim, if only for the fact that he's trained by Chad Brown. He was a winner two starts back at Saratoga. I thought he got a very, very nice trip that day to win. Yeah. He still looked a little bit green in the stretch. In his first start against winners, he actually finished third, but it's Chad's world that he was placed first yeah. via disqualification. This is a horse that has okay tactical speed, and as we see from this Chad formulator fact, he's probably well spotted in a race like this. Past four years, three-year-old turf routers off of 45, 260 day layoff in non-graded stakes at Belmont, 30% winners, a $3.05 return on investment. That being said, I don't think he has such an edge over this field that I'd want to bet him at a relatively short price, although he has a lot of upside. Yeah, I agree with all that stuff. I mean, there's certainly a chance he could improve um, again in this race, but he's going to have to to win. It's Chad Brown, so you're just never going to get the kind of price you probably need to really bet him in this race. I won't be shocked when he runs well, but I'm not betting this horse. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector for this year's English Channel Stakes. And we've got the three, Smooth B, out there on the lead, along with the number nine, Majestic Dunhill. But I have a feeling Joe Bravo is going to be real aggressive with the two, Sand Dancer, so. breaking from the rail. Those were the tactics that Joe used last time out in the aforementioned Hill Prince. And he tried to basically bottom out that field from the start, and he almost pulled it off at 23 to 1. I think, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, I, I agree with that. He's drawn right on the inside. They should be sending this horse, and I think they probably will. Um, they did that last time, and he was able to clear off on that field. Again, um, it was at a time when the rails had just come down on the inner turf, and he really rode the best part of that turf course until the stretch, and then he drifted off the inside and have added, who we've already talked about, came right up his inside and beat him in there. He just held on for a second. I think he's a pretty good horse. He's an underrated three-year-old turf horse. He's no superstar, to be sure, but he's underrated. He's pretty good. I think he fits this race really well, and if he makes the front, he might be tough to run down. We see the three smooth B out there, and he is a stretch-out sprinter, and he has been up close to some legitimately solid uh, sprint fractions. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if he's up close to the pace, but to me, he's more of a dirt six and seven, one-turn mile horse instead of a turf horse. He is stakes placed against Pennsylvania breads going yeah. long on the turf, but that was a day where I thought he had everything his own way, and then he was run down in the stretch. His most recent turf race, he was going five furlongs against some deceptively good horses. Yeah, he's going to be um, a pace factor, which I would think. I would I'd be surprised if they didn't try and use his speed in this race, and we'll just see what kind of an impact he can have on the race. I don't think any of his turf races so far suggested he can beat this field. The two horses that finished ahead of him in that August 
August 28th dash returned with buyers of 92 and 90. Let's go to the number nine, Majestic Dunhill, another stretch out sprinter for George Weaver. This horse ran a Kentucky Downs last time out, and he was swung extremely wide, yeah, turning into that long straight. And all things considered, I thought he gave a really solid performance, considering that the winner, Anguston, kind of just shot right on through the rail. If you believe yeah. in ground laws, Majestic Dunhill might have run the better race. I'm not sure about the distance, although we have a positive formulator fact for his trainer, George Weaver. Over the past four years, with three-year-old turf horses stretching out off a little bit of a layoff, we've got one-third winners, $2.41 ROI. Is he good enough to get any stretch out? I think he might be good enough. I don't know about the distance for him. I actually like his uh, sprint form, especially this year. I think he's really improved as a three-year-old. I would just really worry about the distance with this horse. I don't know how much I would really want to bet him um, as they stretch him out for the first time. Golden Brown, the number eight, eight to one on the morning line. Junior Alvarado takes the call. He was up close in the Hill Prince, and then he just kind of backed out of it. This is a horse who kind of made his reputation with a win in the grade three Kent over Carrick, who came back to pull yeah. up a stunner in the grade one secretariat. But since that Kent, he just has not run back to form. And if I wanted to take a horse coming out of the Hill Prince, I'd want Sand Dancer. Yeah, I think I would too. Um, I did like his win in the Kent. I thought he ran well yeah. that day. His last two races have not been e nearly that good, but he was in some much tougher spots. I mean, if nothing else, he's probably back in the right kind of a race this time. Um, so it's not like he's facing you know any killers in here. I think he fits really well on this field. Is it the case that the Haskell got him sour? It's a possibility for sure. They took their shot in the Haskell. Maybe that backfired on them. We'll see. From Europe comes the number 10, Medal of Honor, getting Lasix for the first time. Now, his most recent start was in a very rich handicap at the Cura over good to soft going. Now, three next out winners have emerged from that race, and the winner returned to finish second in a group two. That being said, this horse just did not seem stakes class over there. No, and he didn't. You know, maybe that last race is a pretty good one, uh, for you know, considering the class, but he didn't run that well in that race. Um, and I don't really like his form since he came back off the layout this year and won his three-year-old debut. Um, he really hasn't gone forward from there. Um, he doesn't look like, I respect these connections, he doesn't look like a sort of top class three-year-old to me though. Let's take a look at our top picks for the English Channel Stakes. We're hoping this race stays on the turf. Tell us about Robin Hood, the number four, 12 to one on the morning line. This one has won two out of his last three for Grand Motion. I'm just you know, taking a shot in this race with a horse who is relatively unexposed as compared to some of the other horses he's running against in here. I don't think he looks like that much on paper and in fact, Maybe he's not that much, but he has a really nice pedigree. He won easy last time, a synthetic race at Prescott. He got a nice trip in there, but he won really easily in there. Um, his last two turf races, the only two times they won on turf this year, he's run pretty well in both of those races. The first one off the long layoff, he just got outrun early, but he was finishing at the end of that race. The horse that won it, a stable mate of his, is actually a good 3 0. That horse, Nakamura, would look really good in this field, but he's not in here. He came back in his next start at Delaware around two turns. He got another good trip in that race, but he beat Winter Union that day. Winter Union's an older horse, um, and he wants to go a little longer, but Winter Union would probably smash this field. He beat a good horse that day, so I feel like this horse maybe is better than he looks on paper. I'm not way against Therapist and Sand Dancer, but they're not superstars. They're not the kind of horses I'm terrified to bet against. This horse is going to be a price. He's going to get a good trip in this race. This horse has really woken up with the addition of blinkers and his tactical speed, the improvement, not only from a regular speed figure standpoint, but the improvement from a tactical speed yeah. standpoint should serve him well in this spot. Like Kazim, he's lightly raced with the upside. Unlike Kazim, he's going to be a good right. price. You're going four, two, and six. I think Therapist just you know, just fits this race yeah, like a glove. He's won six of nine. I'm hoping the ground's not too soft for him. Mike mentioned the Saranac. A, he was probably overmatched. B, when you're three, four wide throughout, yeah, tough. it's just not going to work out for you. And I think a mile and an eighth might be a little far for him, too. Might so be. not only cutting back in class, but cutting back in distance for the six therapist. I'm going six, nine, two, five. Mike's looking for the upset with Robin Hood, four, two, and six in the English Channel. You can play the English Channel with a DRF Bets account. Sign up at bets.drf.com and receive a 300% deposit match. Approximate post time for race number eight at Belmont on Saturday, 435 Eastern. Good luck.